We're Gokche and Steve. After getting adjusted to life in Turkey, we felt comfortable enough, thanks to declining virus numbers, to enjoy a day out to try some delicious Turkish food. Thank you to those who reach out with questions for Steve about Turkish culture via Instagram. So today, as we're having breakfast, I'm gonna ask Steve some questions. <laughs> we're here to share my experiences these past few months and my previous experiences here in Turkey. I love this country now and I can't wait to dig into some delicious Turkish breakfast. Let's go into the restaurant. They set up this tree house in the center of the water for us for the breakfast. I'm very excited. I used to climb up on the stairs and bother people who were dining there when I was a kid. One of the most frequently asked questions was actually about the Turkish breakfast. So what do you think? Genelde Türk yemekleri çok seviyorum. And the Turkish breakfast, Türk kavaltısı is probably my favorite in the world. The opportunity to kind of pick and choose the whole little, little in the middle concept, of course, is very unique and I love it so much. I feel like this is more like a tapas style. Like we have like small portions of everything that you wanted to have. We're gonna start with sujuk. <laughs> so sujuk is Turkish sausage. It's not pork based, it's beef based. Another question was, what was your favorite thing about getting stranded in Turkey during the coronavirus quarantine time. Watching Ashka Mem Nu repeats. <laughs> but on a more serious note, I was very lucky to be in a country where they were willing to step up and take care of anybody here no matter what and make everybody feel very, very welcome during such a difficult time for everyone. So thank you, Turkey. Çok teşekkür ederim. Gökçe now is giving out the cigar of Burek, which is essentially a cheese pastry. It's like feta cheese spring roll. Mm -hmm. On to the next question. What is the most difficult Turkish word? The letters that are not normally in the English alphabet are proving challenging. I still can't pronounce hala. I think the most difficult word that I don't even know if a lot of Turkish people can say is what is it Czechoslovakia? Czechoslovakia. Sort of like yeah. super califragilistic expialidocious in the English language. Mostly though, the words that give me the most difficulty would be the ones that have a lot of the really Turkish letters together. And I'm mostly speaking about the uh, uh and uh letters. Simply because it actually hurts my mouth to really pronunciate those letters. This is my favorite, honestly. I can never have breakfast without tomatoes, cucumbers, and some greens. So you've been to a lot of Turkish weddings, right? I have. Including yourself. My own Turkish wedding, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you learned how to keep up with the Turkish dances at the wedding? I, of course, learned the halai very quickly. It's kind of a dance in a circle if you're not familiar with Turkish wedding culture, of course. It took me a try or two, but I got it down pretty, pretty good. You just kind of follow along. That was easy for me. But the one that I'll never be able to do is the more Ege, Asian traditional. <laughs> it's going to take me a little bit while longer to, to learn the Ege dance. But he's good at Ankara. Ankara Ankara <laughs> And you know the damat halaya? Damat halaya, of course. So nah, nah, nah, nah, nah. The traditional dances is still uh, in the works, so we'll keep practicing. So another major part of Turkish breakfast is of course Turkish tea or chai. Really, really delicious. They have it much more frequently than coffee. They have it all day throughout the day, but it's most important, of course, with breakfast. One of my favorite questions was, what is the strangest experience you had ever since you've been to Turkey? I think the strangest experience is still when we took that mountain bus. Oh yeah. Some of her family lives in Kataya, Turkey, which is about four hours from where we are in Balakesir right now. There's a shortcut bus that goes through the mountains. They pretty much overbooked the bus. There were two women sitting on the stairs into the bus there were people sitting in the middle aisle on their suitcases. And then on top of that, the bus driver was smoking a cigarette in one hand the entire time. He was on his phone ah. for half the trip. It's where I saw the most strange thing in Turkey yet. A guy was on a motorbike holding like an actual full ladder, ladder. on one of his shoulders. A very strange, strange, unique experience for me. We have a friend here. Yeah, there's a cat underneath this couch waiting for us to Give some food. That's another cool cultural thing about Turkey is how many stray cats there are, but 
everyone in Turkey really takes care of all the stray animals here very, very well. Stray cats, stray dogs. So another question was your perspective about Turkish music. But before I complete this question, my dad is a huge Turkish traditional music fan. And in our house, we have nearly every Turkish music instrument. instrument. So what do you think about Turkish traditional music? And what do you think about Turkish pop culture music? For me, right, I've gotten a lot of traditional Turkish music. It's <laughs> Look, I respect that type of music. I understand people like that type of music. It's just, it's not for me. And I like dance music a lot. But then I could also listen to Atina or Duman and Senden Daha Güzel, one of my favorite songs. We've seen more Veo Tesi live in New York City before. Yeni Turku. Yeni Turku. My taste and what I listen to are very varied. Uh, but who is your favorite Turkish singer then? Voice-wise, probably Levent Yüksel. He has one of the most amazing voices I've heard. Turkish singer, non-Turkish singer, doesn't matter. Well, the first Turkish song that I learned and still one of my favorites, of course, is Ben Boyleyim by Atina because, of course, it's my way in English. And Can you did... sing it a little? Hayas, bu kardama, ben jeleyim, bir kaç sızım Yeah, I'm going to stop there because <laughs> Gökçe and her family are the professional singers me. Uh, I chase the cats away. We'll leave it like that. <laughs> One of these favorites about Turkish breakfast is actually honey. And this is supposed to be kaymak. Kaymak mm -hmm. is a tougher layer of yogurt, which has a lot of fat. But today they didn't have kaymak, so they substituted it with yogurt. Yeah, it's almost dessert-like. Yeah. It's the best way to describe it. Yeah, like a milky dessert. Bal kaymak is the most amazing thing I've ever tasted. It takes normal bread and makes it the most amazing bread in the world. If you're in Turkey and you are going to have Turkish breakfast, you absolutely, absolutely need to try bal kaymak. Final question. Ne olacak bu senin hali? Çok teşekkür ederim dayıcım. I was a huge football soccer fan, so I knew even before I met Gökçe, Galatasaray, Fenerbahçe, Besiktas. Originally, when I met Gökçe, she told me she's not a huge football fan, but she supports Besiktas. So I was like, you know what? I'll make Gökçe happy. I'll be a Besiktas fan. Even within her own family and her friend group, there's rivalries of which Istanbul club to support. Naturally, her uncle, our best friend Atakan, were like, no, you can't be a Besiktas fan. You have to be Fenerbahçe. So now I am a Fenerbahçe fan. So her uncle, of course, now wants to know what I think is going on with Fenerbahçe. And I have to say, Ali Bey, Beni ara, I will help you fix Fenerbahce and we will win the championship again very soon. Don't worry about it. I got it. No offense to go to Sarai fans, you know, there was a pressure on him for Fenerbahce. Olive is one of the biggest income in this region and one of the biggest sources in Turkey for olive and olive oil as well. So we are spoiled here with a lot of olives and a lot of delicious olive oil. Cheese is a very, very important part of Turkish culture as well. We have a lot of different cheese from all over the country. As we wrapped up and we were trying to leave, our family friends who own this place insisted that we should stay for Turkish coffee. It's a big part of the culture. Right before you leave at restaurants, they offer you tea or coffee. After you drink Turkish coffee, you put the cup upside down and the reminiscence of it kind of dries up and creates shapes around the cup. Some people claim that they can read those shapes in the cup, tell your fortune. So we have our Turkish coffee. I like mine sade or just black Turkish coffee. With the coffee, which is a little bit bitter, they give you a sweet drink to kind of refresh your palate. Now that my coffee is finished, it's time to flip it over to get my coffee right in. Wrong side! <laughs> and I already messed it up. And this is going to dry, and after it dries, she's going to read the cup with the shape. It's wonderful, she says. Do happiness is gonna happen this year, slowly, be patient. She told me to pick a number from 1 to 5 and make a wish. And I did. And she's like, it was three, right? And I'm like, yes. She's like, yes, it's gonna happen. Şimdi dinlemek lazım. Eve döneceğiz. Ondan sonra akşam yemeği yiyoruz. Thank you. See, I can speak Turkish.
after finishing up our delicious village breakfast, we took a quick breather at home before heading into Edremit for some incredible Asian Turkish food. Now we've come back into Gokçe's hometown center to have late lunch, early dinner at one of her childhood friends' restaurants here that is one of the most well-regarded restaurants in all of Edremit. He has brought this new style to Edremit and it's a beautiful restaurant. Traditional Asian style mixed with traditional Turkish style. So we're very excited for that. We will go sit down. We're gonna go see what her friend Ekrem has in store for us today because the menu changes each day. He asked us what we wanted <laughs> before we got here because he wanted to save some food for us. Burada taş fırınımız var. E, taş fırında pide, kebap vesaire herhangi bir ürün yapmıyoruz. Sadece yemeklerimizi pişirmek için kullanıyoruz. Ekrem used to be an editor at a food magazines actually after college. Aslında birbiriyle e, bağlantılı bir kariyer. Bu çalışmış olduğum yani gastronomi editörlüğü üzerine çalışmış olduğum 5 sene içerisinde e, yeme içme sektörünün dinamiklerini irdelemiş oldum. Ters göç hikayesi. Buraya geri dönüş yaptım. Edremit'e geri dönüş yaptım İstanbul'da. We're gonna continue from breakfast, so <laughs> yes, I'm still on the hot seat here, the Turkish hot seat. So you told me about the hardest word that <laughs> you basically can't pronounce in Turkish. What is the easiest word that you can say? Yok. Yok. Yes. Why Simply, do you say yok? It's an informal way to say no, and it's very simple because it sounds exactly like egg yolk. This is one of the popular Turkish dishes called semisotu. They use purslane, the veggies, mix it with yogurt and some herbs in it. And they also add walnut. It tastes so good. Do you know any Turkish idiom? Sugibigit, sugibigat. <laughs> that was the first Turkish idiom I told Steve. Every time my grandma is sending us back home from the back of our car, she tosses water. And first time Steve saw it, she was like, Why are they throwing what, water at the car? What is, what is grandma doing? Uh, essentially, it's when someone's leaving, whether it's plane, train, car, bus, it doesn't matter. But generally, with the car, they'll come out with a bucket or a pitcher of water behind yeah. the car leaving, and they'll toss it after the car, and then su su, give it, su give it, go. Right. Go like water, come like water. And this is kadın budu köfte. Kadın budu köfte. Kadın budu köfte actually translates into woman thighs is made uh, of rice instead of bread inside and they cover it with egg and then fry it together. It tastes so good. The outside texture is definitely like kind of like a fried shell and the inside you can still see like all the meat itself and like it's very interesting to bite into because it's not exactly anything that you expect. So it's got a little bit of spice, a little bit of pepper, and we I really, really enjoy that. When you're in Turkey and you see the chef who's cooking your food, you want to say, Ellerine salak. Ellerine salak. And that means health to your hands. It's the literal translation, but it's a- Health to your hands so you can make more food for us. So next question is about hand gestures in Turkey. Is there any hand gesture that surprised you at most? Can I have your hand? <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay that I do that because she's four months older than me. How dare you! Actually, you're not supposed to do that to someone who's four months older than you. It's a sign of respect to elderly people in Turkey. So, Kokçe's grandma, for example, that is, I guess, the one main hand gesture in Turkey that I know. And then we also have the kish cake. Uh, Ekrem talked about it. <laughs> UNESCO recognized Turkish food it is usually chicken, chickpeas, and wheat kind of mashed together, but he's actually used lamb in this one, and it's usually a holiday or bayram dish. Good, yeah. Last time I had it, I wasn't a huge fan of it. It was just all right, in my opinion, but... We'll see how you like it this time. Yes. Oh yeah, this, wow. is, this is much better. Almost similar to hunkar bayandi, but... Oh yeah. Hunkar bayandi is my favorite Turkish food. This really, really texture-wise reminds me of hunkar bayandi and that creamed eggplant, and, and it's, oof, wow. So good. This is one of the best catch cakes I've ever had. Another question that we get a lot, of, you know what the question is, is Turkey safe? Is Paris safe? Is New York City safe? Is Los Angeles safe? In my mind, it's kind of a silly question at this point, but I'm also subjectively biased, of course. Yeah. Because when I'm going around Turkey, whether it's Istanbul or here, you go with I'm me. never alone and never without another Turkish speaking person. Right. But of course, if you feel safe enough to go to London, you should feel safe enough to go to Istanbul. There's never been a part or a point where I felt unsafe. I felt safe enough to bring my parents with me for our wedding in Istanbul right. and show them around in Nalt Sultan Ahmed. And they never felt like there yeah. was an issue about going around Turkey. Yeah. So Same. we could do a whole video about this and we just might. Yeah. But 
in a nutshell, Turkey is as safe a country as you could possibly visit. And yeah. I highly recommend that you come, of course, taking current safety precautions for your health yeah. with the COVID virus going on. Do you want to try your breakfast? Sarma? These are one of my favorite Turkish foods. They're the stuffed grape leaves. They're called yaprak sarma. You can make it with two ways. Either you can make it cold with olive oil heavy, and when they make it hot, they make it with meat. I prefer cold, to be honest. It's more of like an app, the cold appetizer in my mind. And by the way, mutteşem. It's so magnificent, so, so delicious. Maybe number two after your grandma. Okay, this is one of the most frequently asked questions. What do you think about Turkish food? If I haven't said it already, Turkish food by far is one of my favorite foods in the world. Hunkar Bayendi is amazing. Keşkek pilav is oh, amazing. I love köfte, I love pide, I love lamanjun. I go now a week without these foods and yeah. I'm like craving it. We have baklava today. It's homemade baklava. I'm so excited. Wow, probably one of the best baklavas I've ever had in my life. He said there's 40 layers for this baklava. So it's good. It's not overly sweet though. It's still, it's like right sweet. There. Right there. We just finished up eating at Lokanta Bahar. It was so delicious, but this is the end of our food tour for today. If you have any questions for Steve, and if you want to know more about his perspective of Turkish culture, and if you have suggestions about where to go and what to eat, in Turkey, please let us know, comment below, and uh, give us a like. And we're gonna go next explore more around the Asian region of Turkey because with restaurants opening up, that means tourism is starting to open up as well in the country. And Gökçe can't wait to show me more of Ege than Where I've never seen up. it before, exactly where she's grown up. Stay tuned.